Yeah. So where were you guys last night? Was uh, not mm -hmm. yeah. Nottingham. Basement, Rock City. Yeah. Yes. yeah, how was that? Awesome. Yeah, Rock City is my, uh, my ultimate kind of venue to play. Absolutely. I think living around here, we come from a place just outside of Derby mm -hmm. called Burton, and I think like Rock City to the people there is just like you know, it's, it's the best yeah. venue in the UK. In, in Go Place, yeah, here. Yeah. So the kind of most popular one. Yeah, I think Rock City it, uh, up is you already like <laughs> it, yeah without a doubt it's the place that everybody kind of wants to play there's other cool venues and stuff obviously but we loved it we loved it it was really awesome uh, not only in terms of uh, the venue and how good it is but also in terms of people because they were really really hospitable friendly and crazy yeah yeah Nottingham people are good Birmingham people are good as well like, you know, but, yeah, there's something about you know Nottingham and, and I think Rock City and we'll Saturday see. night as well must have been like we'll see, we'll see tonight. Yeah. yeah so what kind of crowds have you been getting on the UK tour the crowds are great yeah. I, I'm, I'm surprised yes. this is the first time we are yeah. In the UK. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, it was, you know, yeah. reading a little bit about it's you quite guys. It's unnormal to have such people when you came, when you come for the first time. This isn't, when you're not, you, you know, this isn't the first time that you've been on kind of like, obviously tours like this, but first time you've been in the UK. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it, what surprised us most is that come here, for, for example, in London, it was the biggest show on the tour, obviously, and uh, the hall is 450 people on Monday night singing with us all together. Yeah. yeah. I you can hardly, hardly uh, see it in Ukraine, if around Ukraine, I'm because no one, no one sings along. So at the minute you think you're bigger in the UK than you are uh, back home? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, to some extent, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of band, bands find that, like, they're unappreciated in their own country, yeah. We've done it That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. yeah. Is this, this is, it, I know it, why it happens, but it's a sort of a side effect. You start in your own country, and uh, definitely you gain your first fans, your first fan base in your own country. And by the time you break through to other countries, people in your own country just get tired of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that you know, how did it all start? If people are, because um, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe um, this interview going out, um, people, some people might not know who you are. So just kind of like dead briefly, how did it all start for you guys? Well, because I don't, um, it didn't originally, um, it wasn't originally. Uh, yeah, let's all get a little bit closer yeah, now that it started. Quite noisy, yeah. Um, because you weren't the original singer, is that, is that right? Um, the, there was a, there was a little before, bit of a transition, wasn't there? Yeah, exactly. So, there yeah, you guys explain. Well, uh, you're you trying to explain because I wasn't in the band. How it all started? Oh man, I was in another band actually, and um, all these guys were my friends. And uh, Dmitry, who is uh, actually our ex-guitarist, uh, he's not in the band, obviously. Anymore. Yeah, he was a founder. So um, when their vocalist, the first vocalist for Ginger was a male, actually, Max, when he left for the, for the USA, um, Dmitry asked me uh, to help them uh, with one gig. And so, yeah, okay, guys, uh, I will help, but. Uh, and then we game. will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a substitution. We, yeah, just a substitution. And then it was actually great. And we actually decided to make it like a full time. Yeah. Yeah, so that was 2009. And then uh, the lineup constantly changed. Right. Yeah, it changed. Has it, has it settled down a little bit now? Yeah. You feel like this lineup is. Yeah, it, it, but it only settled down in 2011. Yes, I came in 2011, and the same year, 11. It was no, I, I mean, it, it didn't settle down. Uh, to some extent, yeah. to some extent, we at least started to have tours, more of concerts all around Ukraine. Yeah. I mean, the concert members are just like since 2000. And 
16 or what? When uh, Vlad came. Well, yeah, Vlad. That's yeah. your kind of the lineup that is yeah. that is now. But now yeah. you feel like comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What is Finally. the uh, what is the music scene like in Eastern Europe? Like that kind of Ukraine, Poland, like. There isn't enough fan base, there isn't enough audience for these bands. Uh, we, so I can really, I, I'm absolutely sure that there is a big difference not between, for example, English scene and Eastern European scene, but between uh, European scene and ex-Soviet Union scene, right. where we come from. Yeah. Yes, there is a huge difference. And the biggest one is that people in our countries, I, I'm not saying our country on the Ukraine, but our countries, ex-Soviet Union, with the majority of people just do not listen to heavy music, do not listen to heavy progressive music. Mm. They, they, most of them are just pop likers. They, they, yeah, they yeah. just listen Maybe, to yeah. some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the, when they were young, actually, they they used to, to listen to some like, I don't know, metallic shit and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But then when, when they reach 30, I'm grown up. I don't need it. <laughs> I understand it happens. Why it happens? The thing uh, I believe that this sort of music considers to be antisocial. Yeah, by the majority. And once you, uh, I know, you listen to something heavy, then uh, most people around you will consider you to be a freak. Yeah, yeah. Which is absolutely different here in the UK. Yeah. Oh gosh, definitely. You know, you like. I don't think we're ever going to grow out of listening to heavy music and, you know, people older than, than me and Kimberly's younger than me, so, but, you know, where we go to, there's lots of old guys that, uh, you know... So, it, it, it is quite okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, is, sure. it, is, it isn't considered to be something They're quite respected, but in Ukraine you all access to total rubbish. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's more of a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt, definitely. It's it's something that you have Sticks in, with you. Yeah, throughout. There's no kind of like fads once you're a rocker. That's it. You don't, you know. Yeah. Outcast. Yeah, forever. Think, uh, you, why? And I, I understand why it happens that, so that the, there is such a huge difference. Because it all uh, was born here in yeah. England and in the UK. Yeah, like yeah. rock music. That it new was wave of British heavy metal. Yes, and, absolutely. Know, Judas Priest. Yeah. So, yeah. it, it came out of here yeah and we only got uh, well no, we, we were born in the Soviet Union but we were really small when it collapsed but even a bit older uh, generations they only got uh, access to this sort of music well when 30 years ago yeah I'm good yeah I 30 would years say. ago yeah Kind of like late eighties, I think. Late eighties, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And by the late eighties, I'm 80s... a little bit older than you guys. I'm forty, so I can, oh. I, I um, remember yeah. like mm -hmm. that kind of thing and the Soviet Union breaking up and, um, uh, you know, like the first time people like Iron Maiden and stuff went and played concerts over there, and it was like a huge thing. Yeah. So yeah, maybe you're right. The at the end of the eighties, but but the, that time Iron Maiden released how many albums? Four, five albums yeah. by that time. Yeah, yeah. So, so how did you guys uh, make the transition? You know, this must be like you said, like first time in the UK. How did you guys go from a kind of band in the Ukraine to here you are in <laughs> Birmingham on a Sunday <laughs> night? How did that happen? Uh, That's a massive step, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we have uh, bolts of steel, made of steel. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it wasn't just one step. Yeah, yeah. Actually. Uh, this tour, the UK tour, was planned years ago, mm -hmm. like several years ago. Yeah. We, we had we had to cancel it yeah. due to some tragic circumstances. Yeah, so we just made it yeah. finally. We were supposed to be here in 2014. What's in 2014? But uh, I don't know whether you know this or not, uh, our then drama. 
he uh, fell out of the third floor from the window. He's wow. just he was smoking and fell fell asleep and fell out and broke his spine and definitely we had to cancel all mm. gigs and we didn't make it we didn't make it come here mm. that time but finally after three yep. years almost four years we're here mm. so do you feel like um joining with napalm records has made a big difference in kind of going from a indie band doing it kind of everything yourself to having a little bit of a back in how's that worked out for you well, definitely, yes. It, it, but <laughs> so, it, it, I, the thing is that I, I cannot say that, oh, signing with Napalm has made all that possible. No. It's a combination of factors. And uh, label, the label, of course, they do a great job for us. Mm-hmm. But it's not only about them. Yeah. Uh, it's just about fan base, which, which is growing and growing and growing. It's about us personally that we put so m- we yeah, we well, put same hard much work. yeah <laughs> same much efforts yeah, as we as yeah. we st- uh, did at the very beginning and finally we have a manager for a very long time I did that shitty job but finally now we have a, a manager a, v- a, re- a real professional yeah, yeah. yes uh, he he is from Cologne in Germany but he's American yes and he really changed. The, our view of the whole thing he showed us that how it should be yeah on the professional level as we are now and you feel like that's made a difference from you guys trying to do it on your own to having those absolutely Absolutely. new step new step for sure and what do you feel like the main um you talk about growing your fan base in in like the digital age that we kind of live in now have you done that purely you know, through social media and yes. all of that. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. is that how you've done it? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Self promotion. Self promotion. From the very beginning. Shameless. <laughs> Shameless self promotion. Yeah, and very, very, you know. Uh, There's a big difference. Yeah. Very aggressive self promotion on social media. Like, yeah. like, I'm in a band, right? But I feel bad when I'm going, hey, listen to my stuff. Listen yeah, to my yeah, stuff. Yeah, Just yeah. listen to my stuff. Because everyone's going, I don't want to listen to your shit music. Yeah. You know, and then you feel like, oh, you know, oh, I posted already today, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to share that today. Yeah, you know, exactly. you guys must have s- struck a really good balance between just spamming everybody, but like but you did. say, doing it aggressively. Yes, I, but I, 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 once I did it. I remember our first videos, those old ones, like. Uh, I did it too. Uh, yes, expo- exposed as a liar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was sitting, it wasn't on Facebook, it was on our um, Eastern, post-Soviet social media called VK.com. Right. I was sitting all night long, for, for three or four days, sending those links just to all my friends on, on, on that VK.com website and just to random people to uh, yeah, some to communities uh, devoted to heavy metal music and, and I just was doing this non-stop yeah. and it definitely it was pain in the ass definitely I got so many <laughs> replies like yeah. fuck, fuck off, off. Yes. <laughs> we, won't, we won't ever listen to a bullshit yes and you know not recently a very funny thing happened to me some, some messages were not replied at that time and uh, just a week before we uh, set off to, to the to the UK, I got a reply to one of those messages I sent five years ago. Really? You know what was it? Go on. It was whoa, fuck! That's uh, you reached a lot, guys. Yeah, you, you you got to such a you, you got big. Yeah, so you got yeah. big. Uh, and I, I uh, re reread what I sent him, and it was like, oh, dude, there is a new video by my band. Can you check it out? It was five years ago, and then after five years, he finally read it. <laughs> yes, but now, uh, then he checked all our uh, the social media, all yeah. our stats, yeah. and he saw that we are very yeah. big now. And and who who needs your support right now? Yeah. yeah. So uh, well, well, now man. we have. Yeah, hundreds. we needed you like many years like, ago. Like years ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you fuck off. <laughs> yeah, the funniest thing is that, and the funniest thing is that, that that guy after that he kept asking me how, how we did that, and I I just I told him just read again the messages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. 
So putting together the uh, like this kind of UK tour and stuff logistically, like how does it work? You, you brought all your stuff over from the Ukraine, and have you yeah. guys sorted all that out? Or again, has this been my uh, old ma- my old manager did it? Our right. manager did it. Yes. Uh, Man, I hope you're paying him well. This seems like a thankless task. <laughs> like yeah, that it's really a huge pile of work, definitely. But th- that's what his job is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and he was born for this stuff. But yeah, but I think he was. He, he used to be a musician and yeah, yeah, a good musician. Yeah, but he knows how how the good side is that he knows how it is for a band, and that's why he does it so well. Because he knows both yes. sides of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, That's good. Um, and when I... Um, ah, before I ask that, I'll ask, if you guys were like to compare yourself or, you know, what kind of influences you guys as artists and musicians, where would you, where would you go with that? Do influences first, what influences you? Because that sometimes can be very different to what mm-hmm. you sound like for comparison. Well, I heard what, yeah. So, so what influences you? Music-wise. Um, music. First, music-wise. But you can talk about what influences you in life as well <laughs> if you want. <laughs> oh man, I'm so into music, and uh, <clears throat> I've listened and I listen to a lot of genres, mm-hmm. like from punk rock, reggae, uh, funk, hip hop, uh, metal. Yeah, and uh, and from every genre, I try to take the best of of the genre. Cherry like, pick. Yeah, yeah. The things that suit. Yeah. So my top, I don't know, five maybe. Yeah, yeah go These five. are like a Amy Winehouse, Pink, uh, Lane Staley from Alice in Chains, Randy Bly from uh, Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. Uh, Oh, four, four, four. One, one more. Mm, Bob Marley. <laughs> That's yeah. a diverse kind of. Yeah. And what about you know you? I am less diverse, but still kind of diverse. If we're talking about bass guitarists, then uh, it would be uh, Ryan Martini from Madway. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe uh, Jacopo Storius. Uh, Marcus Miller, Victor Wooten on one side, on the other side Alex Webster from Cannibal Corpse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe, ah, uh, yeah, and definitely bass guitar is from my favorite, most favorite band of all time, so Opus, uh, Martin Mendes. Right. Yes, these guys influence me really a lot, so bass-wise. How do you take those influences then and talk about comparisons? Like, if somebody hasn't heard you guys, what would you compare yourselves to? Like for fans of yeah like yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, mm, man. It's like a bouquet. Mm, bouquet. 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 <laughs> I don't know. A mix of Kajira. Can I help you a little? Yeah bit? okay. Uh, um, because yeah. what do you well, actually think? Well, personally? I was surprised when I read that uh, someone had compared you guys to Pantera. And, yeah, I, indeed, and I was awesome. like, "Wow!" You yeah, know, really <laughs> when you when you're reading that someone's compared you guys to Pantera, that's like for me, Pantera kind of like. Yeah. And for for us too, yeah. for us yeah. too, yeah. So yesterday we um, gave an interview to the guy, and he said like uh, he he's been following uh, us for like I don't know since 2012. Uh, Twelve. Yeah, and he said like you sound like. Uh, Lamb of God. But yeah, we did, we did, really. We used to sound like Lamb of God mm. uh, on 2014 record. You feel about the sounds? Yeah, uh, but we changed really a lot since then. So, uh, and uh, talking about Pantera, I agree that it, in some way it, it sounds like Pantera. And uh, we have one feature which probably we did uh, unpurposely, yeah, if I can say so. Um, borrowed from Pantera. They, they. Uh, one of the best thing about that band is that if you pick an album and start listening it from the very beginning to the very end, all songs will be different. Yeah, for there sure. Is yeah. No, there, is, there are no two similar songs on an album, and this is what we also try to do. Mm-hmm. We write different songs, and we, this is really cool because albums are not boring. Uh, 
but that's I feel like an album should definitely take you on a bit of a journey yes. rather yeah, than it just yeah. you know by getting to the yeah. sixth song like, and just yeah. going oh, I can turn it off now because I know absolutely. what it like. absolutely yeah and the, I, the, I remember the, well, there was a magazine uh, from Europe I don't remember where exactly and they called us Modern Age Pantera yeah, yeah. That's, yeah this, that is, this, is, this is the quote that I think yeah, I've read. Yeah, 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 when I was like, we, we had even a sticker on our, our King of Everything album. Yeah, yeah, first edition, first 100 to 200 CDs which were sold had that sticker on it with uh, quote. Is that with, with the quote? quote. Yeah, yeah, with the quote. But it's not only about Pantera, definitely. Yeah. Lamb of yeah. God, as yeah. Tiana said, Gojira, Gojira, Opus. Yeah, we definitely have some a bit of Opus influence on the light, yeah. latest record. Well, uh, what else? When Stefani even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I love that. I love the fact Vocal that you know, the first few influences you threw out were more pop influenced. It's not yeah. pop. You know. Yes, as for me, it's not pop. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say. Yeah, no doubt it's not pop. No doubt, no, maybe. Amy, Amy yeah. Winehouse, I don't consider. Her yeah, Amy Winehouse isn't pop. And Pink, by the way, it's not pop music. Yeah, more like a pop rock. Pop rock. rock. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. but not like pop, that, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's nice that, you know, it's not just kind of the same thing that you know you talk to a lot of bands and they've just got blinkered kind of views um we're going to end the interview with a few quick fire questions is that okay yeah yep. cool um what do you prefer bigger gigs or smaller gigs those big stages or that more intimate you know feel whoa come on this is quick fire oh, cool quick. let's okay, go big bigger gigs small brilliant <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite song to perform live uh, Pisces. I speak astronomy. Uh, <laughs> what's the best song, your favourite song that you've recorded? Pisces. I speak astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, I speak astronomy. Um, last one. Um, out of the band, who's most likely to have got stopped at the airport? In the band? Yeah. By the security? Yeah. Me and the guitarist. <laughs> Roman. Yeah. And what would it be for? What? Just Wait. search, like, you look bad. Like yes, the beard and the reasons, leather jacket. Two reasons. Uh, no, no, not about this. Beard like more. And our origins. We are, yeah. you know, kind of Middle East. We, we, we have our roots there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm Tatar by my origin, and he's Azerbaijanian. Half right, Azerbaijanian. Right. Yeah, so um, that's why we <laughs> probably. A bit, we are a bit suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope that you don't get stopped at the airport. This is your last night in the UK, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yes. unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, and literally unfortunately, because we love it. Yeah, yeah having a good lot. time. I'm really, really pleased that you've come over for the first time in the UK and you've had such a good time. Yeah, um, where to tomorrow? Uh, not tomorrow, tonight. After the show, really? we set off after the show. Yeah. We have to drive to Dover to get a ferry from here to France. And then we'll just drive straight to Budapest. Right. We have a, sh a show in Budapest on the 30th of November. It's going to be huge, by the way. Amazing. We've already sold 800 tickets. Wow. wow. That's fantastic. Well, guys, I hope that you get some sleep tonight when you're while you're driving and traveling. We have a big van there. Yeah. yeah big don't places. worry. <laughs> we won't worry yeah. too much. Thank you ever so much. Thank for you. An absolute Thank pleasure. you. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Big pleasure to talk to you.